Is it or a poop card? Little oil in my girl, and it's your man Jerry on what's going on. Bad boys, bad boys, what, what you, you gonna, gonna do? do? Can you dig it, sucker? I, I dug it. It's gonna be your biggest episode. We ain't even started yet. Are you ready? Yo. Yo. Yo, yo, yo. What's going, going on, on y'all, people? man? Welcome to the Report Car Podcast. I'm your host, Dane Diddy. And your co-host, Solo Yamingo. It's your man, Jerry. Y'all. What's going on, y'all? Yeah, man, and we got five joints for y'all today. Hold on one second, man. One second, one second. Yeah, man, we got five joints for y'all today. We got that young Dolph Gelato. We got that Wyclef John Jove. I think that's how you say it. We got Jove. that sample Jove. process. We got Sid, Finn, and then we also got Big Sean. I decided, man. But before we get into how you been this week, Mingo? Man, same old, same old. You already know. Promoting, working, pushing. Uh, that's about it, man. Yeah, man. Same here. Working, right. keeping it going, keeping it moving. Yeah, man. I've been chilling. Same thing. Nothing else to share. Uh, it's been, a, I guess, a, a light week. With Jim Jones signed to, to Rock Nation. Right. That's what started the whole camera thing. Congratulations yeah. to Jim. Right. That freestyle wasn't bad. I haven't heard the freestyle. Yeah, I haven't either. I was I was kinda surprised. All like, the all the song uh straight up the band though or something like that. I haven't heard it yet. But Oh, I, so he put a first single out? Um yeah, I think I forgot it's him and someone else. Um How you feel about Jim signing with Rock Nation, man? Do you care? I mean it's a touchy subject, you know what I'm saying? We could get into it. It probably, you know, I don't want to get too much into it because, you know, it, it will drag. There's rights in both sides. There's wrongs in both sides. It's like, you know, it's your story, my story, and then the truth. Not to say that either one is lying, but it's from your point of view and my point of view, you know what I'm saying? So there's some things that you may feel, well, I did everything right, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I did this. You like and me on my side I was like, well, I was doing this and I was doing that. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, I was actually glad to see Cameron's side of the story a little bit. I didn't, I shouldn't have watched the whole thing, but I I do appreciate now because at first I thought him and Jimmy was like cool since they was kids, but apparently they just started hanging out when it was like 20. Right. You know, he's like he always saw them. They right. lived. Their grandmas lived across from each other, but they weren't really cool like that until they got like twenty. Okay. And right, right. He had but, got kicked out of school, and right. Jimmy had his grandma's house because his grandmother passed. But but that 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 don't say much though. They don't. That just means they don't know each other from a young age. But that don't mean that their bond wasn't real. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm or not was, saying it wasn't. No, nah, nah, I'm not saying you. But saying everybody that, but always says like, "Yo, how Jimmy yeah, grew Cam up turned on Jimmy." You know, they grew up together and so and so, and you know, hmm. like. Like I said, man, it's just his side and his side because, like Jim said, that Cam learned from certain individuals and that's why he moved certain ways. Like, And then Cam kind of admitted to to that a little bit by saying when I seen he went with the Bird Gang thing, I went and I, copy, I got the name Now, that was kind of like, oh, then that was kind of low. So what, <laughs> See what I'm saying? So what made, that, him, that bring up, what made him bring up the history? Like, I ain't well, watched the interview. Because Jim Jones was talking about on it on Flex, Flex yeah. and basically okay. said, you know, I, I was on America's Most Wanted for this. I, yeah, I, I saw I that took, part because that, that was the main part that was shared everywhere. But I didn't see what led to that moment. So it was it was because because Cam was like most people go to flex and promote something. Okay. And he was up there to promote Rock Nation signing. But he spent like the whole hour talking about the diplomats Okay. and why it broke up and stuff. Well, I kind of go. I don't know if it was scripted, but Flex kind of drove that conversation. because Flex had like a list of things that he wanted to break down from the beginning. I wanted to ask you this, how this went, how that went. And like I said, Jim gave his side on how he viewed things. You know what I'm saying, um, how he felt he put his life on the line. Maybe Cam felt like it wasn't him. A lot of other dudes were doing it too. He wasn't the only one. But maybe Jim was like, "Y'all was there. Like every anytime somebody was willing to put hands on you or do anything to you, I was willing to jump out the window for you." you know what I'm saying, and that's kind of how we remember it maybe we didn't see a lot of behind the scene things and what because i'm not saying cam was leaning on him like 
that was his muscle, like I said, but that's his man's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So as his man's, he was willing to jump out the window for him. I thought I think that's pretty dope, you know what I'm saying? But on the other end, like Cam said, I've been pushing for you from the beginning. How can I really hate on you? Like I after I really argue with people about you being a, a, a rapper, now you're gonna say that I'm hating? Like so yeah. I mean I kinda never believed that when I heard Jim say Cam was hating on him when he put balling out. And it's funny, it's not even called balling, it's called We Fly High. That just yeah. go that just goes to show like yeah, the song was a hit, but everybody just knows balling. They know the hook, they don't know no words. Right. You know me, I, I can't rap along with the song. I know the hook. Um one nobody thing, knows the name of the song. One thing I ain't like that they didn't touch on Flex interview and Cam kinda touched it a little bit. Was um they kind of touched it a little bit with Max B, but they ain't going to a stack um situation. They ain't, you know they ain't really touch on it too much with the Bird Gang and all that movement. They should have asked Jim about it. Oh, Jim should have spoke about it, but Cam kind of brought it up. You know what I'm yeah. saying like you had artists, you had artists that you didn't put out. You know what I'm saying uh, yeah, he said Jim never put nobody you, out. You, Max you chose, B, you stack. chose to have them prop use, you up, right? Use them for your album. You know what I'm saying and. I mean, you can say the same thing about Beans and State Property if you want to. I mean, Chris and Neef put something out, but that was with Rockefeller. I don't feel like that was with State Property. Freeway put something out, but that was with State Property. Oskino, Neef, none of them dudes put anything out. Right. And Beans had them all over his stuff. He had them all over the group joints. Cam right. Cam was trying to put everybody out. Like, and, and that's the other thing that was a misconception to me, because I always thought Jimmy brought Jewels to the table. I didn't know... It was one of Cam's people that introduced him to Jewels. Mm. Like, it was, I guess it's just going off of listening to the lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Listening to what Jimmy was saying, I assume that he was responsible for a lot of things that he may not have necessarily been responsible for. What, but what, I always thought Cam was like the, well, the yeah. main person, man, because he's the best rapper out of all of them. He carried the whole, yeah, yeah. the movement was strong, but yeah. Cam carried that movement. Right, no. Um, and Jewel's did too. It, yeah, was, I mean, it wasn't Jim just, admitted, I think Jim did a good job admitting to it. I, I'm not gonna lie, even though people felt that Jim interview put Cam down, I feel like Jim was being honest in his interview. I don't, I don't think he was like going in there with intent to put him down, you know what I'm saying? Cause he kept like he bigged them up at times that he was supposed to big them up he still bigged them up like even when when he was uh going back and forth with jay in the booth you know what i'm saying when they did uh welcome to new york city he he, he could have a, a nigga with, with with some kind of like the negative towards you will be like yeah you know jay came in did his thing and you know cam kind of you know took his time to do he could have made him sound like but nah he it was back and forth, and it was crazy. It was classic. I should have seen it. I never seen it. Jay go in, come back out. Cam go in, come back out. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, it's crazy. One thing though, I did note was Cam saying that Jay... Ben had money. Ben had money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He said when he first man. met Jay-Z, <laughs> he had a house with fish tanks built into the walls with piranhas right. and shit in it. Right. From right. the jump. He's like, Jay-Z ain't even got no rap money at this point. And, and, but he uh, already had money. And Dame too. Well, he named it uh, six. Uh, Jay used it in the rhyme before uh, six eighty Safe Street or something like that. I forgot he said it uh, somewhere downtown. And that, that's kept pretty dope. Like pretty dope, man. Dude had money before rap, <laughs> like yeah. real money. You know what I'm saying? On Joe Button podcast, they were debating which uh, movement would be the best for the next movie, like the new edition oh. joint. If they did like a hip hop version. And he was like, they can't do Bad Boy because there's a lot of stuff that people don't know about that wouldn't be able to make it to TV. You know, apparently Puffy would be in jail. He said Murder, Inc. should be the next because he's like, because when you talk about Murder, Inc., you get a little bit of Bad Boy, you get a little bit of Rough Riders in there, you get a little bit of Rockefeller in there, and it touches all of those people. And it includes all of those people because Jai and Irv Gotti getting on, Irv helped Jay. Irv help X, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, and Irv even did stuff with Diddy. So it's like I, it touches every round. See, I wanted to get more. I wanted to get deeper than that. So I would love it to be something like what they did with the. They got a TV show named something like this, but I don't like what they doing with it. Uh, the next one should be like Moguls 
or like the like the 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 hip hop figures like Herb could be there, Dame, Dame. So we could get all aspects because like even in you seen like Cam, Max B lived, Charlie Rambo lived in <laughs> Cam, Cam building. building. You know what I'm saying so it's like people some people introduction to Max B was on the smack when Jim showed him like yo it's my man he just came home blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying um. Yeah, um, Cam admitted to that too. Jim believed in him, and yeah, he said and, he and, didn't believe he, in him. You're right. He he's the one that worked on him, and I guess Jim was in line with the even with the glasses thing and some of his style. I guess he some kind of groomed him a little bit. I'm saying, um, of course. I mean, he's gonna pass down the knowledge. Mace taught him. He's gonna teach whoever you gotta teach. Right. But man, fuck that, man. And, and talking too much <laughs> about Dipset, man. That's what I'm saying. We could have. This could yeah. go so long, man. That's why I didn't really wanna. Is there any other news, man? And that's what's running news right now. Uh, what Jay Z co-signed Nick Grant? No, well, we dope. told you that shit already. You should already right. know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They had a dope. Uh, Rock Nation. Speaking of which, Rock Nation just had a dope uh, brunch uh, yesterday. I think it was. I seen some pictures from it. Uh, I seen it on Rap Radar. Shout out to them. Um, they seem to be always involved in some shit, man. Um, they uh they posted a picture. I seen um Fat Joe. I seen Remy. I seen Jay, I seen Jim, Diddy. Diddy looked like he gaining some weight, man. He just got out of the hospital. Yeah, my lady was telling me he oh, did that okay. surgery or something like that. Yeah. Oh, all right. Or, um, yeah, man, it looked pretty dope, man. It looked like they enjoying themselves, like they working on some power moves. And um, I don't know, man. It's good to see them collective, right. you know, right, everything right. coming together. That's what's up. Right, right. Yeah, man, you want to just get on to it? I mean, we stalled for a while because my interview, my um, my review of Gelato was very short. Yeah. Uh, Adolf, <laughs> Gelato, Adolf, Adolf Thornton Jr., man. He was born in Chicago, Illinois, but he grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, he moved there at the age of two, his Adolf. family. Adolf. Yeah, he uh, grew up in an environment flooded with drugs and alcohol. He always had a passion for music, but a series of events actually made him take it serious. He had a car accident where he almost died, and then his grandmother, um, she died from lung cancer in the same year. Mm. So he started taking it serious. He used rap at first as an emotional release, uh, but you know his friends started encouraging him to keep going with what he was doing. He started his own label, High Class Street Music, and uh, his mixtape grind paid off, um, paid off because he ended up with multiple songs on the top 20 and top 40 on the charts and then he also ended up getting collabs with people like 2 Chainz, Jeezy, Ross amongst others. Uh, he's only released one studio album, The King of Memphis, but Gelato is Young Dolph's 19th, 19th mixtape, man. And I'm gonna go first, yo. This shit is trash. Uh, <laughs> I never was so happy to hear Wiz Khalifa, Young uh, Lil Yachty, and fucking Migos in my life. And uh, even the diss track on Yo Gotti is fucking trash. Like usually at least the diss tracks would be decent, but that shit was trash. I did not have one fucking uh, highlight on this shit. Young Dolph, I'm glad you're getting money and shit, but you fucking suck, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go right after you. Yo, I thought it was trash, too. What uh, you gave it, though? I gave it an F. I failed it, man. Shit. This shit is horrible. I gave it an F as well. Like, you know, <laughs> I could. I, I'm trying to, you know, be as... I try to critique these projects without putting any personal input to it, but I will have to say that I couldn't comprehend this whole project. I mean, like Dame said, I was never happy to hear Migos, Lil Yachty. <laughs> but I will say, number 11, Play With Your Bitch, that was the only kind of track that I could actually feel some, some I would say, heart from, I guess, because it looked like it's something, something real personal to him. Right. But, you know, other, other than that, the whole project was just too many bitches, too many this. Same kind of tempo, yeah, you same know, kind of beat, same flow. I, mean, I get maybe this is his musical uh, outlet or whatever like that, but I just don't see him doing anything relevant to the industry. But if you like the music, you like the music. But personally, I think it's trash. <laughs> uh, I gave it a, a 75, I think it's average. Um, it's basically a mix of him and... Um, him taking shots at, at Yo Gotti, so yeah, that's that's right. kind of how I took it too, and right? There's, and so, that kind of seemed lame to me, man. But it, now it seems like they're talking to each other. Cause even when I went back and listened to Gotti, the project that we just reviewed, yeah, yeah, and that makes sense. It, so, 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 what's the history behind that? If you don't, if you can run it down real quick, King of Memphis. King of Memphis. Um, well, they're both from the area, so of course they want to be the King of Memphis okay. or whatever the case may be. But um, Young Dolph thing is. 
he's hot without Gotti, and Gotti was trying to sign him. Okay. So why all of a sudden you hate me and I'm such a I'm so whack, but you was trying to sign me or whatever. So from Dolph's point of view, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And uh, I haven't really heard Gotti's point of view on it. Like he never really addressed it publicly. I, I haven't heard an interview where he really spoke. If I was on him, it. I wouldn't. Yeah, because it's no purpose. waste of time. He was uh he supposedly also from Dolph's side is uh he, he caught hit, hit either his joint or one of his joints. Like uh, he was fucking one of his girls or something uh, like that, so okay. that probably got something to do with it too. Okay. It, it probably not even about the music anymore. You know what I'm saying it's just now egos, like yeah. So um, that's why I didn't I didn't grade this like an album. I, I figured it was just like a mixtape, him taking shots at Gotti. But then it's funny because now everything is gonna sound. Anytime he talk, talks talks <clears throat> talks braggadocious or anything like that, it's gonna seem like he's talking towards him. You know what I'm saying. But uh, the product the production was okay. It was pretty much the same sound throughout. Uh, standouts uh, play with your bitch uh, on the river featuring Wiz and drop it off featuring Migos. And uh, the guests did they think though? Yeah, the, the guests they did. Even they even, even Yachty like yeah. I, I, I didn't, I didn't even, even know that was Yachty at first. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Well, yeah. Right. Uh, like he hid behind that production a little bit. I I feel like he did. Yeah. Um, gelato. Uh, you know the weed is amazing. <laughs> so I've heard I haven't touched it yet But That's what he chose to uh, Name the album um, Boiler Alert was that uh, Production was okay But I, I feel like he's like A, 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 a Water down 2 chains. I can't even say that I don't that, even man. know like, <laughs> like I don't even know If I can say that man I can't Cause 2 chains, He can actually bring you Some Some heat Yeah I don't feel like You know Dolph can actually Bring you something It's just <laughs> This would be hype music to me. If you want to say hype music, this is all this is. Because I don't I wasn't, see nothing. I didn't get hype at all. Right. Not like, all, at least right. Migos, when, like, you know, call cast. And, like, when I turn that joint in the car, that joint, you know what I'm right. saying? But I guess it's just that kind of music that people just like to bump and they whip, you know. That's that's all but I how, really can say. How do you say? mess up it, a diss track, though? Let, like, normally diss tracks be fire, at least. <laughs> listen, it's just, if you're a fan of Young Dolph, you probably like this. If you're not, you don't like this. It's, this diss... Was worse than Y Club's diss on LL Cool J a long time ago when he's like, "Next time you want to diss, get off my dick and go somewhere and lick your lips." And that was like the hardest bar, and it was a whack ass bar. It was like, "Come on, Y Club, what's Clef got to do with it?" You remember that? Crazy. Well, I, I, I remember. Nah, no, I remember it. Big, I was like, "Yo, vaguely, I remember it." But yeah, I that's how whack it was, it. right? But I feel like that play with your bitch was wackier than that, man. I, I mean, you know, I, I, I props up to everybody doing their thing in the music game. I ain't yeah. trying to belittle nobody. But yeah, man. I want to see, a, I wanna see all black people getting their yeah. money. Yeah, he's he getting independent his, money. Shout out to him. Yeah. yeah, hopefully he can discover a dope-ass artist and he can make money that way. Because I don't feel like this is going to last for too much longer, man. <laughs> Who we going to next? All right, man. We got Jove, man. Why Clef? Jean-El Jean, I think that's how you said, man. He was born in Crocs de Basquiat, Haiti. I think that's how you right, say that. Right. Uh, but he moved to America at nine. Uh, he spent most of his um, some time in Brooklyn, but he actually spent most of his time in East Orange, New York, New Jersey. He started out uh, playing music at a young age. He got a guitar as a teen. Uh, he credits Bigger Haitian and MC Tiger Paul, <laughs> Tiger Paul Raw, and Lobster versus Crabs as his influences. <laughs> Never heard of any of them, right. but you know, at least he kept it real. He ain't say the typical things right, that everybody right, right, say. Right, right. Uh, he formed the group called the Translating Crew. You know, after a while, obviously, they got a record deal through uh, Rough House, and they changed their name to the Fugees. Right. Uh, you know, Wycliffe went solo in '97, and then he had a lot of success with his album Wycliffe Presents the Carnival. Uh, he had t- uh, he had been um, working as a uh, predominantly as an artist, but then he started producing and doing that stuff for other artists. He took a seven-year break at what he calls the height of his career. I don't know if it was really the height. And uh, now he's back, man, with Jove. That's his, this is his 11th studio album, man. Jove is actually a French word, but it's uh, actually a large street party held during Carnival, man. Yeah. How you feel about this, Jarmigo? Amigo? Um, man, I thought it was dope. I gave it a B, 87, right? But, um, man, first, first, first of all, man, shout out to the Zoe, man. Th- those are... Uh, those are my neighbors, you know and I'm saying we share an island. You know, I'm, I'm Dominican for those who don't know, whatever. Um, but um, Juve, they also have a Juve in Brooklyn. Uh, 
I want to say like around September, Labor Day weekend. That's dope. Yeah, that's that's where they, you know, all the uh, Caribbeans get together and the big ass. It gets crazy. Like it's sad, but it. it's crazy. Like it's always some kind of uh, deaths or some injuries or something. Wow, that's like, whack. Yeah, but it, it it people have fun, but then it gets crazy. Oh yeah, it gets out of order. Gotcha. With the fun, it turns into chaos. You know how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, man, I thought this was dope. Um, I feel like him and Thug um have good chemistry. They did uh they did good on Jeffrey, and now uh, they show it on this project with I swear. Um, I feel like White Club style matches up perfectly with with the the sound that's uh that most artists artists are trying to deliver now, um, which is that singing rap type. Um, make you dance, Jack in a move. Caribbean style, right, right. But but he's actually Caribbean, exactly, so exactly. So, it's so he dope. ain't culture vulture, right? Yeah. It's right. He him. fit right into it. Um, and um, I kind of get like a little vibe from when actually as soon as you read the bio and you were describing it, like he's like a Will I Am type, like. He could produce, he could make music, he could make you dance, and he'll shock you. Like, Will I Am produced a lot of hard hip hop shit, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And people don't know that. Right. And he helped Wycliffe, out. Like, Wycliffe has Same too. thing, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing. So um, I feel like he, he, he's back because where music is right now fits where he's at. So, like, this this shot, he took a shot, but it, was, it wasn't a shot in the dark because he was like, man, this is straight up my alley. Like, I yeah, what they doing? Yeah, yeah, what they doing? Oh, I could do this. This yeah. is great, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying that's right. And um, yeah, like I said, I thought it was dope. I gave it a B, eighty-seven. How y'all felt about it? I thought it was pretty solid. I gave it a seventy-nine. And you know, I was just going off the history of Wyclef because you know he has some hits everywhere. So in my opinion, you know, I thought this was great, but it could have been a lot better. But I understand he has the carnival coming this summer, so I know there's more to expect. Yeah, apparently this was like an EP yeah. to lead into the carnival three. Yeah, so it's taking it like that. I'm like, okay, this was cool. Yeah, it kind of reminded to people like y'all still do. Yeah. I'm saying, yeah. Kinda, yeah. so yeah. he don't come out with a project that gets overlooked. Yeah, my, my fault, real quick. Uh, Hendrix was a standout to me. Lady Haiti, The Ring, Review, and Party Starter. Party started, I believe that lady was uh, using a lot of Creole and Spanish because I could hear it. And I believe he used, yo, I think he sampled a, a, a Spanish song that my mom used to listen to back in the days because I, I could hear it in the background. I'm like, I cannot confirm nor deny that. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, that feature on uh, I Swear, I was skeptical when I saw him. Like, oh, Young Thug. But I actually like the song a lot. Um, I still at times don't understand what Young Thug is saying, but he brought a good like you know energy and flair to the song. Uh, I thought holding on to the edge was pretty dope, and I like Hendrix a lot. Uh, but overall, this was a pretty decent project, man. I can't wait to see what he brings this summer. So. And, and, and he brought uh, political. He still did some stand up with uh, Life Matters. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. And if I were president. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, that's not necessarily a new song. Um, aside from Rain. Hendrix and Life Matters and If I Was President this album is pretty much like a party joint you know what I'm saying all of those joints like The Ring it's, it's kind of an awkward way to start off the album especially when like the next seven joints are like party joints and like you said man I agree with y'all on the, the I Swear joint like I wasn't skeptical because when we did Jeffrey he did a couple songs for Thug right. there and they chemistry. actually got good chemistry right so uh i don't know if i see everything wild club season thug but when they work <laughs> together it sounds good yeah and i swear it's one of the highlights of this joint uh i like all of those caribbean sounded joints man this album made me want to get up and start moving uh the ones i wrote down uh are actually like i love lady haiti i love uh hendrix i love life matters i swear and uh Man, it's one of these songs, Hold On To The Edge Of Little Things. I can't remember right now. I have it written here somewhere, but I, I can't get through all of it. Uh, and uh, I gave it an 83, a B minus. I thought it was dope. I actually had it higher and I kind of dropped it. Like I said, I'm trying to be tough on the grades, <laughs> man. Uh, and even the acoustic versions of some of these songs sounded really good. So, Wyclef, man, he's back. He's doing his thing, man. He wanted to let y'all motherfuckers know. Right. Like, y'all still in his people's music and uh, making right. money off of it <laughs> and he's back to do it for real for right, real right, and, I, and would, I don't even know I'm not familiar with the Spanish people on these albums 
but they were fucking dope too yeah. right even the song that he's singing in french it sounds good i don't right. know one word he's saying right um <laughs> yeah. but i believe because that's um haiti use uh speaks creole and creole yeah. is french or whatever yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Creole is basically like a, a, a immersion up. of like yeah. African language and French language because right. the French, right. whatever language they speak, that's what people conquered them. Right. So, right. you know, they speak French there. That, that's why, again, I don't want to get too into it, but that's why I begin with my people. Like, you don't find it awkward that we share an island and this half speaks this language and this half speaks this language. Like... So well, what, what, well, what you think was going well, on Haiti, before Haiti, the, that? Haiti, Haiti revolted a lot. Right. DR didn't revolt right, as right, much. Right. So, and not only that, they did things to lighten up the population in DR. And they tried it in Haiti, but it didn't necessarily work out. Matter of fact, when this is over, I'll show you this video uh, about DR. And they talk about how dark-skinned people are. It's like a three-minute video. Right. But they talk about the lighter you are in DR, the better you're off you're treated in DR. But, I mean, mm. it's like that all over the fucking world. So. Yeah, it's a, it's, a men- it's a worldwide mental brainwash. It's, it's not like white supremacy, yeah. really. It's That's not, what it comes right, down right, to. But right. hey, let's try not to get into that, man. man. Move on, man. All right, man. We got Sampa Process, man. Sampa Sisse. And see, fucking spell check. <laughs> I... I and they, they changed it to Simple. I, I know his name is Sampa, though. Sampa Sisse, he was actually born and raised in uh, Mordon, Mordin, South London, UK. Uh, both of his parents were immigrants from Sierra Leone. That's in Africa, if you're not aware. Uh, he started playing the piano at three years old. He actually says that on the song. Uh, he got uh, his break in 2010 when his EP, EP Sundanza, actually came out. But it was his second EP, Duel, which caught the attention of a lot of artists. He's worked with Drake, Beyonce, Frank Ocean, Kanye West, Solange, amongst other. Process is his debut album, man. How you feel about this joint, Mingo? Oh, uh, man. Um, it was smooth. It was good vibe. Uh, but nothing really stuck. Like, nothing really stuck. Like, the way it stuck on, like, Drake's project. Hold on. one. I just want to say this because, like, I, I, I have to say this before my time, too. The album is categorized as electronica. It's not categorized as hip hop and R and B. Okay. I don't know okay. if you want to take that into consideration, because I'm not as versed in electronica as I am with every other genre. Right. You know. Okay. We I just mean, did it. Just basically, it's really just to put y'all up on. I some mean, it still to me, I still took it as R and B. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it has a lot of elements yeah. in it from right. R and B. Um, I thought it was solid. I gave it an 81. I see. <clears throat> I see. Just, just because, um, like, nothing stuck. Like, when I think of him and I hear his voice, I still hear, I still hear that joint from Drake's album in my head. Too much. Right. Like, he killed Apparently, him. that was his joint, but he, 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 he let Drake. Man. Oh, well. Really? Man. Yeah. I hope that check was nice. Like, he got a, like, <laughs> um, he put a version out, like, where it's his, like, his song. Okay. Of it. Yeah. But, yeah, he, he, they got an article and he was saying that he, he was telling his mom, like, mama. Drake wants to use my song and then she's just like who's that <laughs> you know but that's that's pretty cool he's also on um your mind on Beyonce's album with Drake because he said he got to work on that oh. song because of Drake right. so like Drake brought him along with him when he was going to work with Beyonce and I wonder if that's how he ended up with Solange working with Solange maybe because yeah. of Beyonce yeah so he so he's on the song for like 30 seconds apparently in the background so doing, maybe doing maybe maybe giving that song up to Drake worked out in the long run yeah you know obviously, yeah right. definitely because he's on saint pablo the last song they added to the use uh life of pablo album right and that song's fire by the way right um this joint uh under blood on me and no one knows me the piano joint um those were the only joints that really stood out to me but um overall it's a solid project man it's not bad it just it it he didn't bring nothing as hard as the joint on Drake joint that I heard. Like, as hard as that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I wanted to hear something better than that. So, um, yeah. How y'all feel about it, though? Yeah, man. I'm right with you, man. I gave it 82. I thought it was pretty solid. Um, I This is the kind of album you got to actually be in the mood for. You know, I, I tried listening to it, making deliveries this week, and it wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just the type of album this is you know you gotta be set in the mood gotta be lyr- lyrically in tune to it you know you gotta pay attention um blood on me 
was a real dope song to me. I, I really like that one a lot. You know what it's about? No, not actually. It's uh, about sleep paralysis. Like when your mind wakes up before your body does, so you're awake, but you actually can't move. Okay. That's and then dope. your body wakes up later, and you're kind of like basically having bad dreams and stuff like that, and he can't move. I kind of got that from him. And yeah. then like his girl will wake him up, or somebody else will wake him up from the dream. And you know, he's having nightmares while he's having these dreams. So, wow, that's deep. Well, yeah, and then uh, No One Knows Me. I thought that was real, you know, intimate, kind of let you into his, like, you know, personal side of how much, you know, music might mean to him. Uh, and then uh, under. Sounds really about his mom, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm going to talk about it. No, because, you know, <laughs> taking it from just the first listen, you like, okay, maybe L- this listen, is more like. Listen to the second verse really well. Okay. And you'll catch it. That's what's it's, up. It's actually kind of obvious. I, I missed it, too. Yeah. I was in here yet like this was the last thing I reviewed because everything else was well, pretty. Well, that'll simple. lead me this into my really next. Hard to... That'll lead me into my next point. I think what made me kind of grade it this way is because you really have to pay attention to yeah. what he's saying because you can, like, you can't really understand if you just okay, yeah, this is dope. But if you really listen to it, like, okay, what did he say? So I think that was kind of my problem with the album. Not to say there's nothing wrong with his vocals because I, I like his vocals a lot. But you might not really understand what he's saying, and you might have to rewind a couple times. So he's from Britain too, so okay. so the tone is kind of hard to hear some of the words he says. Like okay. I had that issue too. All right, but yeah, other than that, um, Incomplete Kisses was pretty dope. But yeah, you know, I thought it was overall a solid project. I'd love to see more from him where he goes from here. Yeah, um, I gave it 85. Uh, B, I thought it was dope. It's not really far off from where you guys are. Like this dude is really deep. Like everything seems to be a metaphor, like plastic 100 degrees Celsius. Like basically he's just saying like he's melting under the pressure of not just the music industry, but some regrets that he said he had. Like his brother, he hadn't seen his brother in a while, then his brother got really sick. He had stepped away from his mom for a while and then she got really sick and I'm um, damn near dying. So, and like, you know, and he said some real shit too. He was saying like, when you get so caught up in what you're doing, you kind of start forgetting to check in on other people. Like you can get to the point where like, so he started making music and he got to the point where he was like, damn, I ain't spoke to my mom in like a month. Mm. I ain't spoke to my mom in like two months. Let me check up on her. He calls her and she's sick. And it's just like, oh man, I got to go back home. Yeah. Like, and stuff like that. And I was just like, man, like that's some real deep shit. Like in uh core song, I, I felt like core song sounded kind of weird, but I'm pretty sure that's where the electronica comes in. Cause like I said, I'm not really versed in that. Uh, I really like uh, my favorite songs, the Timmy's Prayer. That's my favorite joint. I thought that joint was hard. Kanye West actually helped me with the production. Uh, Blood on me. No one knows me like my piano and Reverse Faults. I really like all the car metaphors with him and his girl's relationship. Uh, and what should I be like? I like the idea of the song. I didn't necessarily like the song, but he was saying like the song is like when you're growing up. And people are telling you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Right. And he's basically saying, like, what should I be then? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, man, that's deep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, like, a lot of the songs, like you said, you got to be in the mood. This is something that you got to really sit back and listen to. And that's what I did yesterday, man. I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and have me a drink. And I sat right here in front of the computer and listened to the whole thing. Like, I had listened to it a whole bunch before that. It's just everything was going over my head. And as I was reading the lyrics, I'm like, oh, like no one knows me like my piano i thought he was just talking about a piano and then when i listened to it he was just saying like the piano in his mother's room like in his mother's home so he's going back to that time being in his mom's home now he's not there anymore now she's gone and he's reminiscing of how she was there as he was learning how to play wow the piano like man it's all really deep deep. man yeah and uh he said like listening back to the songs it like petrifies him and stuff like that because like blood on me he didn't realize he felt like that when he recorded it because he said like he literally ran around the gym until he was out of breath that's why you hear him breathing like that while he's singing because he wanted to feel a certain way when he was singing it and after he stepped back out of himself to listen to how the song came out he was just like wow i felt like that like man this this album is really deep so i mean if you actually want to give it a chance like that i felt like you'll enjoy it but if you're just casually listening you'll just think it's okay like seriously because Except for a couple of the songs, so a couple of the songs will hit you no matter what. Yeah. Right. But you know, it is what it is, man. Finn, Sydney Bennett, man, she was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. 
You know, she got into music at an early age. Her mom was a DJ and her uncle was a reggae producer out of Jamaica. Uh, she built a studio in her in her bedroom in her home and she learned some engineering techniques and then she got into production and then she also got into songwriting and that's when she started singing when she started writing uh she felt like an outcast at uh past um palisades charter high school so she transferred to the hamilton music academy and that's where she felt a little bit more comfortable uh she got her stage name from her older brothers uh she's also a part of the group the internet she was a part of odd future but she announced in march last year that she had left odd future but they were all in a new video, so I was kind of thrown off by that. I guess it's just, you know, symbolism that they're still cool. Uh, that the internet is actually taking a break. That's why Sid's putting out the solo project. All the rest of them are doing the same. Right. Finn is Sid's debut album, man. How you feel about Finn? Man, I thought the vibe was uh, dope, and her voice is dope. I got like a Leah flow from her. Uh, I felt the music and it was like emotion driven. Like she's really pouring out feelings through her lyrics. Like. Um, <laughs> like, it, but it's funny because she she's gay, right? Not that yeah. anything has to do with it, but she's that means she's talking to females. Now, now I'm not even trying to you know front, but listening to a couple of songs, it kind of was weird right, a little bit. Right, I was that's just what like, I'm saying. I'm like, this she something come, I should be singing, <laughs> right? <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. She come, man. Y'all fellas, man, putting out R and B, man. Like you keep saying, take it a little more serious, man, because. Yeah, she she killed it. Yeah, she killed it, man. But not that that matters, man. We, nah, we, nah, we're nah. enjoying it regardless of what uh, the gender is or, or what it is. Because regardless of what she's saying, I'm taking it, it to me, to my personal I mean, no thing. matter what, I can still sing along. Right. right. I don't feel right. no type of way about right. singing along with that. Right. Um, shake them off was a cool way to start. It was a way to shake off the doubts, the critics, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, Hit Boy did that beat. It was a little different. Right, right. For, um, for, for what Hit Boy would normally do. But... I, I, I don't have no standouts because I, I like the whole the entire thing. Um, what you do, man? You give it a hundred, man? Nah, uh, I gave it an eighty-five. <laughs> dope. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you was about to say it's a classic. Nah, I nah, like, okay. nah. I can't say it's a first classic. classic of two thousand seventeen. Nah, I mean you know this is her first solo project, so we don't have nothing else to judge her by. But I mean the internet. Yeah, but that's a group kind of that's a group a group effort. So. You know, I thought it was pretty dope. Uh, let's see where she goes from here. The next time she puts something out solo. I go ahead, man. I go next, man. Uh, I I actually like the album uh, Shake It Off. Uh, I wasn't really a huge fan of that being a way to start off the album. Uh, no, just felt like it was a straight Aaliyah Jack. Yeah. Like, I felt like yeah. Aaliyah, yeah. she stole the song from Aaliyah. I gave the album an 88, by the way. A B minus, man. I thought it was fire. Uh... I think besides uh, Brian Pouspos, who only dropped the EP, this is pretty much the highest R&B grade I've given out so far uh, this year. Uh, the songs that rubbed me the wrong way, and that's why I didn't get a higher grade, uh, No Complaints and All About Me. And they're not bad songs. They just don't fit. The beats don't fit the way she's singing. She sings really soft and really light, kind of like how Leah would, and right. she's using these like hype style beats, right. and uh, it don't it don't come off right, in, in my opinion, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sh but yeah, no matter what, shake them off. Uh, nothing to sun. I, I like the vibe on nothing to sun. It's a real cool ride around vibe. Yep. Smile more. That's my favorite song on the album. Uh, body and I, I I really like uh, I really like black on uh what's it called over oh yeah shout out to him man he from uh Probably he from my head also um, yeah he I did his thing my, on that he's song. from my side i think close to my side but yeah um he did his thing on that feature and his project that we reviewed wasn't bad either yeah right and uh and on insecurities i like the change up that change up was fucking fire but the song's okay <laughs> the change up was fire though and um yeah, like y'all said, I want to hear what else she's she's gonna come with, man. But that smile more, man. That, that's my shit. That's definitely going on the playlist, man. Yeah, man. I gave it an eighty-three. I thought it was pretty dope. You know, <clears throat> I will say this about her: uh, she definitely has, you know, submitted her own lane when it comes to music. I believe, and I could uh, piggyback on what you were saying about no complaints and all about me. I don't really feel like that was her, you know? I think she has her own type of, of feeling when you get to her music, and I thought that was kind of out of character for her. 
Um, Cause whenever she sings, you know, it's just Sid, it's just her, you know. I mean, as soon as I heard her on the internet, I'm like, this girl has like a laid back feel, like unique feel to her. And that's what I like about her. So, you know, I'm all for trying, you know, different things, but at the same time, I'm like, you already got your lane, so just stay in it. I don't really think she need to branch off as much as she did with those two. But uh, overall, I think it was a pretty solid project, man. Um, I, I, only thing I can say is I might like her with the internet more, but as a solo effort, I thought it was pretty dope. Yeah, I ain't really got else that much else right. to add to it. I do think it's a dope album, though. I agree. One of the dope R&B joints we've done um, so far this year. Yeah, I, like... Even though you said that about uh, you like her more with the group, I, I I believe she did her thing solo. Like it was I'm, a, I'm assuming she's gonna completely leave the group at some point. Oh, of course. Yeah, I mean it's it's I guess it's inevitable. She's okay. the only member of the group most people actually know by name, and she was on Common's album. She, she she's on people's album. Working she's moving. With people. She's moving. Yeah. All right, man, Big Sean, I decided. I did a bio for Big Sean when we did Big Sean not that long ago, but I did want to tell y'all what he said about the album. I decided. He said it's a statement. You know, he feels life is about choices, uh, and um, both people on the cover are him. One's his older self being older, and one's him at a younger age knowing everything the older self knows. And uh, he feels like, you know, the other, uh, yeah, man, basically that's the concept he decided he made the decision that he was gonna make it work and be successful and it's working out it don't really work like that but well it's a good gesture and this is actually his fourth studio album uh i actually wanted to go first man i gave this a 77 to see i thought it was average uh i'm i'm not a huge fan of concept albums because they usually fall flat and the concept of the album doesn't the songs don't fit the concept like he's trying to string this concept together of it just don't work uh bounce and moves yo i want to talk about producing right quick no fucking beats are trash yo like i can do that in like five minutes and and when i do stuff like that i i delete it because it's trash and that's fucking trash like he killed the beats but the beats are whack. All it is is like a fucking drum heavy beat with a nigga rapping over it. And I hate when niggas doing it. And it's always fucking Metro booming, South Side. Yeah, it's lazy as fuck, man. And I really hate that shit, man. Cause I really care about the fucking culture of the shit. So when I do shit like that, I throw it away and, and it, and sometimes I, it'll make its way to one of my friends and they'll be like, yo, that shit is hot. And I'll be like, no, nah, that shit is trash. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm even, I'm ashamed that you even heard that shit. Because I can't stand beats like that. Now, uh, aside from those two songs, I, I just really wanted to get it out. I don't really feel like there's any real hits on this album. I don't feel like there's songs that's going to be on the radio that's going to be booming. Like, I don't fuck with you and play no games and Marvin Gaye and Sharna. He don't get that on his album. Uh, no favors is pretty dope uh i like the light uh it samples uh what is this dude's name i wrote it down it's uh kevin uh shit it's uh eddie kendricks and uh, most people might know it because alicia keys played it on unbreakable but uh it's actually pretty dope um jeremiah's been doing his thing on uh, the features for a while uh but my favorite joint is uh halfway off the balcony i really like that joint sunday morning jetpack with the dream is actually really dope and uh stick to the plan i like how it starts out one way and then the beat changes and yeah, he even changes up, up. Yeah, the flow, yeah. yeah and that joint is actually pretty dope but overall i feel like this is definitely not better than uh dark sky paradise and it's all it it might be better or it might be worse than Hall of Fame. Like, I, I'd have to go back and listen to Hall of Fame. This is not his best effort. Uh, all of the uh, guest appearances, the Dream, Amigos, the Flink, um, Co- um, Co- Cozon Choir, and Star, they all did their thing. Uh, I could have done without Same Time Part 1 with 2088 also. That shit was kind of corny. Uh, I'm not trying to hate on Big Sean because I, I know he has, has this big thing about people hating on him if you say something bad. And, uh, I like the fact that it seemed like he more so did the album for his city and the last part of the album seems more dedicated to his mom. But like I said, 77 C, I thought it was average, man. How y'all feel about it? Yo, I thought it was dope, man. I gave it an 85. <clears throat> like, um, 
you know, if y'all remember, y'all know my thing about Big Sean. You know, when he first came out, I wasn't always overly impressed, impressed with his work. But I have to say, like, this was a pretty balanced project. I agree with you when you're saying it really wasn't a balanced concept. Um, more or less, I thought he tried to, you know, stay with the same tone of the album with the interludes and stuff like that. But it, it really wasn't really balanced. But I get what he was trying to do. Um, bounce back. I have to say, man, I, I like that joint. It is a simple beat. I, I get that. I but, hate the hook and but, the beat, but he killed it lyrically. Yeah, like, but, you know, I guess it's just that, you know, that motivation he has had his whole life. And I guess anybody can really relate to that. You know, you take an L, it's up to you to decide if you want to bounce back. And, you know, that's a simple, loose concept. But I think only somebody like him can really execute it like he did. But I do agree with you. Those, like, uh, as far as production goes, Bounce Back and Moves wasn't my favorite on this album. Uh, jump out the window I thought that song was really dope production wise halfway out the balcony that has to be my favorite song on the album uh, voices in my head and stick to the plan I don't know what it is about that song I don't know if it's like <laughs> what he's talking about because you know everybody can relate to that voice in your head and everything like that trying to veer you off your path but then when he comes in with stick to the plan like I'm like okay that's kind of dope because anybody can really relate to that switch up you talking to yourself saying oh, i don't know if i can do this do that this is that but then your other self comes in like stick to the plan so i think that was pretty dope sunday morning jetpack was really dope i loved all what the dream brought to that song once again every feature he's on he kills except um, for his project yeah so you know and uh inspire me i thought that was sweet and you know the last track is real banging but yeah i agree this is not better than dark sky paradise but uh oh yeah that track with the migos they did their thing. They did their thing on it. Um, I, I ain't gonna lie, that was pretty dope. But yeah, uh, I wouldn't put this over Dark Sky Paradise. So in that step, it was kind of a step down. But maybe this was just something he had to put out. You know, he felt like he had to tell himself. I felt like it's for a city. Yeah. So to, you to know. try to encourage people in Detroit. That's, yeah. that's kind of what and, I took and I from appreciate it. that. You know, that's pretty cool. But yeah, what you thought about Mingo? Man, um, what I took from it, man, I thought this was a personal, a personal album. This is um. From what I got from it, from his interviews and from even the intro, uh, I love the intro. I love light. I, I let me let me go like this. I, what I get from the music, from his interview, especially the intro and the concept that he tries to set up, it, it's like he made a decision to live a certain way, uh, make and like he decided uh, to look at things differently uh, um, when when stuff happens or or if it don't happen or whatever and i'm saying and um the intro kind of kind of gives you that because i go through that man I, I no matter the job bro no matter the job it's not that i don't mind working it's not working that i have a problem right, with right, right. it's the fact that reality hits like do you really want to work 20 30 40 years in this position for this company like Bro, like I, I played ball and I really felt like I was gonna make it when I was young. You know what I'm saying? And that shit hits me every now and then. Like, yo, bro, I could still hoop at a certain level, but I'm 31 years old. Like, the reality's over. I mean, the dream is over. Reality's here. You know what I'm saying? But it's like I look back and I feel like I blew it some days. Like, man, like it, I could have really, I could have really pushed. Yeah. So this, I, I, I looked at this as a motivation to people. Like you said, in his, in his city, to decide to live a certain way, look past certain shit, decide to uh, to push no matter what. Look at the uh, cup halfway full rather than halfway empty. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, man. Like, and, and I feel like he brought the intro was perfect. Then you, you see the light with uh, with the second track. Then uh, bounce back. Of course, you take the L, you bounce back. Like that's how you gotta look at it. Yeah. Bounce back. Keep you gotta on. always bounce back. Move right. Keep it pushing. And um, no favors. I thought um, what was hard. Him and M M got political on it. You know what I'm saying through his shot. When the girl did the beat, right, she right. It. Um, I don't know if y'all caught that, but uh, Sean took a shot at Drake with the Midas uh, gold touch line. I went platinum too. He stole the flow. I didn't even pay attention yeah, to that. I ain't, I ain't yeah. catch that. But Big Sean, ain't, I don't know if he's ready for that. Yeah, man. Uh, but, I don't but know. They, well, they, you know, they, they, he they got the sharing, chain now, so he got sharing, that confidence. They were sharing that flow for a little minute, 
and that's where that line came from and i think that's why sean raps over the beat like he over raps because he he tried to change it you know what i'm saying but uh yeah no favorites jump out the window uh move. man we ain't gonna just act like eminem ain't kill that shit yeah eminem killed all <laughs> shit, yeah, of course but we i'm just saying we gotta we gotta make sure we put that out there like i like i tell people eminem killed it flow wise yes putting words together but that i can relate to I, I I like Sean's verse better, to me. You know what I'm saying I, I can't say the same. I can't really. I mean, I understand, but it's like I think it's because Big Sean's verse was more on the topic of no favors, right? Then Eminem was just spazzing off Slim Shady, you know. Be, that, that's what I'm and saying, I think and that's, that's what where it is. and that's when my my because man, I know I be rapping. Eminem lyrics. I mean, come People on, man. He surprised. says some stuff about not needing no favors. No, too. no, I'm not yeah, saying he it, went off the just, topic, but when you when, when you put in Eminem's perspective, I mean, he technically rants while he's rapping. He yeah. goes bonkers. You know what yeah. I'm saying so. It's like I can't always relate to Eminem verses, but does he kill him? Yes. Lyrically, the skill. Does he complex kill? Yes. I can't deny that. Do I relate to it? Not all the time. You know what I'm saying. I understand. But uh, but the track was fire. They killed. They both killed it. Uh, jump out the window. Moves. Um, halfway off the balcony. Um, might be my favorite joint. Um, I like um, inspired me. Um, I thought that was pretty dope. Um, and with with like him not picking up the phone and then getting back to making his phone calls and all that and i'm saying um i, I want to say something to that because on those interludes he kind of was talking to his mom about uh he said he felt like he's lived a life already and every way he woke he wakes up he has that like drive to do better than his last life Be- he felt like he blew it like, yeah, he, ain't, and, like he ain't really and if you watch yet. his video for bounce back and halfway out the balcony i can kind of catch a theme of him and the old man He's kind of like looking at his life and he's kind of questioning like he's always looking up at the sky. I don't know if you noticed that in his videos, but he's always looking up at the sky. And I just took that kind of like, okay, I'm asking God why did I do this? Did I do it like that? Should I did this decision? Should I do this? And it's funny. It's not it's not it's funny because some people think you're ungrateful, man. Shout out to my man, Dre, man. He hit me, man. He like, yo, bro, man, like you inspired me, bro, because you move. You got the car. You got a crib. Uh, like we just had a dog like it, he might be coming back uh <laughs> but um he's like yo but you still pushing you still with the podcast you still with and your that's the mess Beca- bro yeah, yeah bro because i don't own none of that shit bro i'm still paying for that car i'm still paying for that house none of that shit is mine my people are still in a certain position i can't even though i, I look good on social media because i don't do it to front but because of how i'm living it may look decent on social media doesn't mean i could just come out my pocket and do for my pops that's in dominican republic or something or do for somebody and i'm saying so it's not like i mean all you're just saying is, is i want more right yeah, I mean, right i want to be able to do more because it's not just you being comfortable you know what i'm saying and i think that relates to bigger than me you know all right. this stuff is bigger than himself right right you know? so right. that's you know what, what i think you know he's trying to capture that message that it ain't just Man, about he's trying him. to put on for his whole city yeah. he wants his whole city looking good yeah. right he don't want to i mean because you got to think about that and it kind of goes back to what sampa said you get caught up in what you're doing he getting all this tour money then he go back home what do you see right he see people drinking yellow and brown Bobby. water mm-hmm. and right. you know you got to have a water filter on a on a faucet but water filters unfortunately don't remove lead chlorine or fluoride and he sees that yeah so I, it is bigger than him you know what I'm saying? And he's not the only one that says that. Everybody yeah. sees that. Everybody want to do better because they want to be able to help. But other more people, people need to be saying it. So I applaud him for doing that. Right. So, yeah. yeah. That's and, what's and, up. And, but like, this is not better. I gave it a B minus, a 83. It's dope, but it's not his best project. Um, and it's not. It's not concept. his worst. It's like it's lyrically, not it's not bad. Right. Right. It's just. It's just. I don't. I don't really like the, the whole way it came together. Like I. Big Sean is better than this, and not saying it's what, like. I nah, the concept, people, concept, concept is dope. Yeah, the the uh, the title is dope. The, the concept the, just isn't is threaded out. It's like to pimp a butterfly. That's a hard thing to go by. Yeah, but it's not as like you know, Good Kid, Mad City. It's not as thread out as that. Where it's a really well thought out story. Right. Like moves. Where does that fit into the story? 
I tried to piece that together, but I don't. I don't. I, I, I'm guessing you got to make moves. You know what I'm saying. I mean, shake, you do got to shake. I mean, you got to make moves. But that's just the saying. song name. Yeah. That's not the song actually making move. Uh, making sense in the thread of the story. I'm just saying, like when you listen back. So, I feel you. You I know. You. That, that that's all I'm saying. But Big Sean, man, he he's he's one of the nicer rappers we get out here. Uh, and another thing I want to say about the production, man. Like when I was saying, like, hey, man. I'm not saying Metro Boomin' sucks. <laughs> like, he did the Sacrifices beat. Yeah. And that beat is fire. Yeah. I'm just saying, I hate beats where all it is is a fucking 808. That's, that's the, the, there's no melody in that's it. That's the trend is, now, yeah, though. It, so, it is the trend. Know, yeah. And it's like, just to think, produce, like, rappers pay for that. They pay for that beat. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, like, there's other producers out here. I, I'm not saying come work with me. You better I'm get back saying, to sending out I mean, your beats, you man. To, but now I'm just saying, like... <laughs> You can go ahead and, and there's some really dope producers out here like the Honorable C Note. That dude puts it all in his beats. Justice League. Like there's and I'm I'm pretty sure they're not charting as much as these dudes. And, like and you would think with the connections that Big Sean has now exactly. he would reach out yeah. some more. He could have, he could have had M produce something for him. M, yeah. M producers. You know, you're I, right, I'm, you're I'm, right. I'm just saying, man, like if, if Southside, Metro, Boomin, TM88, AOA, they giving you these beats that's just drums, say fucking no for the culture, man. I, I know you want to get that club record, man, but yo, this shit is fucking corny, dog. Go ahead, man. Hit me with the you are old man shit. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, yo, that shit is whack for the culture, man, because what what's going to happen is we're going to end up losing hip hop the same way we fucking losing R&B. Y'all going to hear more about that next week. <laughs> When we review this Kevin Gardner uh, Kevin Garrett Like Man this shit is getting Kevin corny Garnett. man You know what I'm saying Like Tuxedo <laughs> They doing fucking Funking disco And motherfuckers Acting like it's new Yeah Like man We've been doing that shit forever But since we done Moved away from it And we moving away from rap We moving away from R&B Like people ain't rapping But bars is coming back that, that's all I got to say about that, man. Check the podcast next week, man. We're going to be reviewing that Lupe Fiasco, uh, Droga's Light. We got Sir Her 2. We got Kevin uh, Garrett, False Hope. We got Saha the Prince, uh, History. And then we also doing that Kadir Latif, uh, Mind of Malcolm, Voice of Big. Right, right. We we doing that Shaha for people that don't know. Shaha might be putting out a project this, later this year. Might uh, we, we 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 praying we on hope. it. So we are hoping yes. on it. He said something about it. So we hoping he does. And we didn't want it. We didn't want it to catch up by surprise for people that don't know who he is. He's uh part of good music. He's been helping a lot He's of. He's been people, ghost right. right. He ghost wrote nine songs on Jesus. Hey, <laughs> matter of fact, it was a poll, and they said if you had to pick one, which would you pick? college dropout or 808s and heartbreaks and everybody was saying 808s and heartbreaks and i was just like i don't know why y'all motherfuckers are so in love with 808s i know that's what they say but college dropout changed a lot of shit too so 808s and heartbreaks don't get me wrong i understand It's, it's responsible for drake it's responsible for lil wayne singing it's responsible for a lot of things but that 808 but that college dropout album was hard and I don't know if I rank Kanye's albums, that shit is not even his top three albums. I'm kind of confused on that poll. It's surprising <laughs> to me. But man, people love 808s and Yeezus. And I don't know how. Like 808s, and look, I'm not saying 808s is whack. Yeah, it That's was, it not was what good. I'm saying. I, right. I like Love Lockdown. I like Heartless. I love the joint with Jeezy. That's amazing. Right, uh, right. Uh, there's some joints on there. But it's not better than College Dropout. College Dropout does not have a wax song on it. Yeah, that was a complete project. Yeah. Right, all the way through. Late the, registration does not both, have a bad song. Graduation does not have a bad song. They both uh, My Twisted Dark Fantasy, does it have a bad song? I can't think of one. They both classics. Oh, yeah, it does. Uh, that one song I don't like, the very last song. It's not, And it's not It's not a bad song either. Yeah. I, I would say they both classics in their own right. They, no, I wouldn't say that because I wouldn't though. give it a classic grade. I mean... You, the reason why people are going to say it's classic is because it changed music and music has came came out differently after that with Drake and, and people like that, The Weeknd. And hey, man, when the Diplomats came out, they changed the game, but everybody don't call it a classic. Come on. I mean, the Diplomats That's changed true. a lot of stuff. That's true. I mean, Cam, like Cam was saying, we didn't even think about it before they did it. Who was putting out mixtapes? No, nah, nah, I agree with him. Nobody was. Right. Well, I didn't really even think about that. They were like the first artists to put out mixtapes. 
of themselves. Yeah. It they wasn't like on a DJ's joint. Yeah, man. But uh, um Patriots won a Super Bowl. I, I told y'all, man. I told y'all. Yo, I don't we even want to go back to that, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh I feel like it came down to a ref call, but I'm I'm not gonna elaborate too much on that. Uh, Please, but I'm, I am happy football season's over with, so now we ain't got to discuss that shit again until August or September. So basketball pretty much takes front and center at this point. Uh, oh, man, y'all seen what happened with Oakley at the Garden? Man, yeah. That. Crazy, right, man? That shows, man, that organi- organization is wrong. What, what what happened. Like, why was he fighting the security? They want to say he was under the influence. No, exactly. That's what they want to say. But the, 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 the owner doesn't get along with Oakley from already they have history. And Oakley probably sat close to him. He bought a ticket. Why did he have to buy a ticket, first of all? But anyway, he bought a man, ticket. I, I, he probably I still asked, don't feel like they should be coming for free either. If I got to buy a ticket. Yeah, he, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, he gave him 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he did. But he got and, paid and for those 10 years. True. <laughs> so... All right, whatever the case may be, he gets uh he I guess he requests the closest ticket that he could get to Phil and Dolan and them, I guess, or whatever. But he want to hook off on Phil? Uh I guess he wanted to let them hear it cuz what they trying to do to Melo is kind of wrong. Like they hurting the brand, you know what I'm saying? And they hurting the team. But they're not hurting cuz the garden is still selling. Phil's still getting paid. So, I, you know I, what it is, man, and I, I feel like they bullying Melo. Because it's like the media is scrutinizing him. Right. And then that leads to the... Because f- the fans are listening to the media. So then the fans go to the game and they booing him. Right. And the guy... Like, if Melo but, leaves, but y'all going to be hurt. Y'all going to be feel, butt hurt. I feel this 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 incident with Oakley exposed it. It's not the players. It's the organization. It's the people behind well, them. Everybody's been saying Phil needs to go for Phil a Phil needs to now. go. But the owner needs to sell that team. Because he doesn't care about success. No, he just cares about seats being right. And, and foreigners and people that visit tourists that visit New York, as we know, like it's not. We don't go to them games. I'm saying they do. So that's always gonna happen. So he don't care about the culture changing. I'm saying so. My 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 idea is boycott. Like you guys was claiming to protest and boycott when uh with Dan Tony and, and they got Dan Tony out of here. But boycott to the point where. He wants to sell the team because he's about to start taking losses. Once that happens, <clears throat> then he's either going to care about the culture or sell the team because he don't want to lose his money. You know what I'm saying? Either or. Right. Don't matter to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, I feel Oakley's uh, thing kind of exposed that, that it's, it's kind of them, the people behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? Kind of, that's a mess over there. You know what I'm saying? And um and then 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 the crowd loved it. And I'm saying uh, Oakley's also gonna have a press conference to uh, give his side of the story. Uh, Spike Lee's taking Melo side. He said if it was up to him, he'll pack uh, Phil's bags himself. Um, we gotta see, man. Uh, he also took out Oakley to dinner. Spike did. You know what I'm saying, and they chopped it up. And the city loving Oakley for it. The city loves anybody who shows that you care. I'm saying, and he showed that he cared by even putting on the, w- w- the way he put on. I'm saying, yeah. Uh, the one last thing I, I wanted to address football wise is shout out to all six of the Patriots players that refused to go to the White House, man. <laughs> <laughs> bro, shout out small. to all y'all, man. But but you see what, yo, if I, yo, bro. I wish if I was a bad man, I would have made a lot of money last week because I, I like I. I I seen all the things. That's why I was texting you still at the third quarter when you told me, like, you still think it's a challenge. Like, but, yeah. man, what you were saying was you was going off of goddamn Vegas. That's not how you nah, felt. Nah, Because I nah, asked listen, you when you said nah, what listen. Vegas said. No, nah, no. Nah, 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 I don't want to nah. hear what Vegas listen, said. I was keeping it simple, but it, it was just too much to go into. Like, all right, Vegas already set a number, right? Boom, boom. Fuck how, Vegas. Listen, but Vegas ain't wrong, wrong a lot. Man. They ain't wrong a lot, so I ain't betting against I wasn't asking Pete. what Vegas. I was nah, asking Pete. Juan. Nah, Pete, I was Pete, asking but, Mingo. But these are my these are my theories to why I felt the oh. Patriots going to win. Vegas already got it a certain score, right? Boom. Then the Simpsons episode, right? Okay. Boom. Then... um. I, they gave Matt Ryan MVP. I felt like that was a pat in the back. You know what I'm saying? They gave him MVP before that, right? Then 
third quarter. Referee calls oh, oh, offensive oh, hold oh, on oh, the left tackle, oh, but does oh, not oh, call defensive oh, face mask on the oh, cornerback. Oh, Boom. Right quick. Oh, Falcons this, can't kick a field goal and go is, up by nine. This is part of the whole holy trinity I'm trying to tell you, <laughs> bro. The whole triangle that goes on with these people. Listen, boy. Then, man, go Google Robert Kraft, how much money he got in Alter Blank, man. Kraft got it. You know what I'm saying? Then, uh... What other factors? Brady wins. He stamps himself as the GOAT quarterback, right? Another fact. Look how many factors on one side. Then peep this. Biggest factor of all. If Atlanta wins, how many players really going to go see Trump? I mean, it's looking like a lot of Patriots players ain't going to go either. But it would have been worse with Atlanta. We don't know that yet because people from the Patriots are still getting in line. I, I, we'll see, man. But it's just too many factors. I'm saying, like I said, if I was a bang man and I had it last week. They already week, know whoever won the NBA championship ain't going. <laughs> the whole damn team ain't going. It because it's going to be an immigrant or black team. <laughs> Unless the head coach going to go. Crazy. Crazy. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Uh, some black dude in uh, ba- on Baltimore got shot by the police. They're saying he got a gun. He had a gun, but I didn't see it yet. So I ain't see the, the cop dash cam. But it was like it was funny, man, because I was reading it on like it was a Facebook page called Eyes Wide Open. It's basically like some black dude owns the like it's his page, and like it was mad white people commenting on it. But it was just the way they were commenting, like they were commenting like, yeah, he deserved that shit. He should have had a gun. Well, hey, man, if the cops pull you over, man, and your people was getting shot all the fucking time, you might want to have a gun with you too, because you don't know what the fuck gonna happen. I'm not saying he was right or wrong. I'm just saying, right, man. Right. With the amount of black people that got killed by the cops last year, right? Some black people feel like you gotta carry a gun because the cops are fucking tripping. Luckily, the cops around my area seem pretty cool, but it's all it takes is one. Sorry. Why? Why? They ain't, the people, the cops that patrol here, they don't live out here. There's a cop that lives down the street from me, but he fucking works in uh, DeKalb County. Mm. Speaking of which, I gotta stop uh, at the auto zone and get a tail light. My gun just. Blinked on the yeah, way here. Yeah, you might, you might want to do that. Yeah, you might want to get yep, that. On the way home, pick up a tail light. Well, a bulb. Just you know what I'm saying. Replace it. Yeah, man. Um, you know, man. Follow the podcast. Subscribe. All that shit. It's right, gonna be on right. the bottom of the video. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, man. Check out ambitious image, man. You right, know what right. it is. Yeah, man. At so loyal clothing Inc on Instagram, man. Check us out. Also, um, if you're moving in or out of Atlanta, um, hit up my uh my family um at uh Hotmail. I mean, Honest Movers, Honest Movers 29 at gmail.com. Yeah, that's Honest Movers 29 at gmail.com. Also, check out my cousin and them um, unofficial commentators podcast. Um, they on YouTube and on um, Facebook. Um, also, check out scotchforder.com for fantastic products and beard grooming. Uh, use the SP uh, promo code for 10% off. Yeah, and don't forget, it's like Diddy said, man, go to that Google and um, put in the report card podcast and find us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Um, shit, that's it. That's it. Yeah, man. On that note, peace. peace.